Thank you so much. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk and for um, putting this impressive event together. Um, I'm giving this presentation on behalf of myself and Marie Isenda, who is the co-PI of the DigiNauts project, which this research grows out of. Um, it's really a shame that it has to be online, at least for some of us, um, but I'm still looking very much forward to this conversation. And I would like to invite you to email me with any questions, comments that you would have liked to have discussed over a coffee in a break. So in this presentation, I'll discuss trust during dangerous and irregularized journeys to Europe. That is, I'll discuss trust in situations where it is, in a sense, impossible to trust because normally agreed upon rules and conduct does not apply. That is, my topic deals with what comes before integration in the specific context of, ref of refugees and asylum seekers and undocumented migrants. Um, but I believe that the difficulties of establishing trust during their journeys is an important context to understand when talking about integration. So I'll focus on the trust practices of irregularized migrants during their journeys to and through the European border regime, um, as well as the trust practices of solidarity workers who try to help them on these journeys. And I should clarify that we use the term migrant in a general, not a juridical sense. And we use the term irregularized in order to stress that these arriving migrants are unable to travel through normal, safe, established means, but rather are for forced to find illegalized and often highly dangerous means of traveling. Before I get further into this, I'd like to just briefly introduce the DigiNauts project. DigiNauts is an inter interdisciplinary uh, collaboration between Aalborg University, University of Copenhagen, and the IT University in Copenhagen. The aim of DigiNauts is to examine how migrants' widespread, varied, and innovative digital practices remake migration by reconfiguring existing di digital platforms and by potentially creating networks of solidarity as they navigate through and in the European border regime. The project is currently in its final stage, and we're working on um, publishing two books uh, next year or shortly thereafter. So this paper will be, uh, be a chapter in one of those books. Now, I'll, brief, I'll briefly describe our methodological approach before I move on to talk about trust. So this paper is based on ethnographic fieldwork with the regularized migrants um, or Ethnographic fieldwork carried out with Syrian refugees who were previously irregularized migrants um, and solidarity workers of different nationalities in and around the Danish Swedish borderlands, the Ursund region, in 2018 and 16. So the refugees we spoke with had arrived to Denmark and Sweden uh, between 2014 and 16 as irregularized migrants, um, and they had since obtained refugee status. So we were particularly interested in how the refugees had made choices about where to go and how to get there. We were also interested in the role of solidarity workers in this navigation and the significance of digital practices to both groups. Therefore, we mainly used in-depth retrospective interviews. We interviewed, interviewed uh, 16 refugees and 16 solidarity workers. Let me move on now to speak of the conditions of trust in the context of irregularized migration. Irregularized migrants who travel to Europe do so with few rights and often carrying large amounts of cash, cash to pay the smugglers along the way. They depend on illegalized modes of travel and cannot seek help if assaulted, threatened, or similar. They are in many ways at risk. The choices they make regarding which smugglers to travel with which routes to take and where to find information can literally mean um, life or death to them. For the solidarity workers who help the irregularized migrants, they might on their own behalf risk fines or even prison time, but their decisions and their, or their choices might at times mean life or death to the irregularized migrants. So the, so the stakes are extremely high. Trust in these situations is crucial for people to act yet it's extremely difficult to establish. Under different circumstances, time would often be a key factor in establishing trust, 
but for the irregularized migrants and the solidarity workers. Trust often needs to be established within a very short time span, often with people with whom they've had no prior interactions. So with this paper, we aim to explore how trust practices enable difficult navigational decisions during irregularized journeys. Following Alberto Jimenez, we do not pursue the task of defining what trust is, but rather examine what kind of work the notion does. We aim to show that there are different yet related practices of trust enacted in, various, in the various ways irregularized migrants move through the European border regime. While we acknowledge the particularly challenging situations of the irregularized migrants, we suggest that the repertoires of trust presented here cut across practices of irregularized migrants and solidarity workers. Further, we argue that trust is practiced not only through personal relations, but also through what we call hybrid alliance building between social media platforms, digital devices, solidarity networks, and more in, complex, in a complex pattern of trust practices. Thinking of trust building as a practice and a process rather than a human disposition, we find inspiration in the notion of trust as a tricky social achievement built over time as suggested by Meitner. Taking the lead from this point, we further suggest that the repertoire of relevant actors in trust building practices should be broadened from interpersonal relations to also include engagement with the environment, not least technologies. We therefore suggest an attentive look towards hybrid alliances. We approach the complex relations of, trusts, of, tr of trust as hybrid alliance building in order to highlight that the trust irregularized migrants depend on to navigate through the unknown, shifty, and often hostile territory needs to be established over short time spans. Such modes of establishing trust cannot rely solely on relations and experiences established over a long time and they depend on a broad repertoire of actors, often involving digital practices. Through the stories we've been told of irregularized journeys, we find at least four different intertwined modes of practicing trust. We term these four modes of trust, relay trust, a fast trust that can be passed on from person to person, positional trust, which is granted based on the trusted person's position in a larger social system, Institutional trust, which relies on institutions and particularly on the principles imposed by such institutions. And desperate trust, a sporadic and irrational mode of trust. Please allow me to elaborate on each. Relay trust is a mode of trust that can be passed on from one person to another, so a person can assume another person's trust in a third or fourth person. That is, it depends on previously established relations of interpersonal trust, often established under very different circumstances, and on chains or networks of trust. It therefore ties into other modes of trust and cannot stand on its own. So relay trust is a mode of trust that can be passed on quickly through different uh, persons in a, in a network or chain. It's a fast trust. Positional trust is a mode of trust which relies on the trusted person's position, experience, background, or practices. Positional trust, then, can be granted to people regardless of personal relations, though it does necessitate a recognition of the position which enables the trust. Positional trust can be established in people who have experienced with, uh, the journey from having made it, people who have a certain position, for instance, as leaders of a solidarity network or similar, people who, by virtue of the uh, personal background are expected to be sympathetic and people who perform certain practices such as uh, solidarity work. Positional trust then is a mode of trust which is particularly focused on individuals but on individuals as their position in a web of relations and actions. Thirdly, institutional trust is grounded in perceptions of established entities such as the UN, the police or companies which can enable a trust beyond in people and situations beyond these entities. This mode of trust particularly takes into account principles in, imposed by such institutions, such as established means of payment in an app, um, the legal significance and the legal significance of signatures. Such principles exist to guard against interpersonal mistrust 
as Wachira and Harold Bond would have it, enabling a relative trust between people grounded in a trust in and relations to an institution. Institutional trust then emphasizes that trust cannot solely be seen from a first person perspective or merely be understood as a relation between people. Lastly, desperate trust is a mode of trust which is sporadic and irrational. It's a mode of trust which is not based on relations with people or entities, but rather on urgent needs and a lack of alternatives. Desperate trust then is a mode of trust that enables action in situations where it's extremely hard to know or to trust. And it might be fair to say that most decisions made by irregularized migrants during their journeys feature some element of desperate trust. Before I turn to an analysis of how the four modes of trust building were relevant to the irregularized migrants and solidarity, solidarity workers and how trust practices enabled navigational decisions and action, it's important to stress that while the four modes of trust are established empirically, they are by no means ontological categories out there, nor is it possible to attach one mode of trust to a particular person or case. Rather, as we shall see, specific situation, situations can be analyzed through several or a combination of the different modes of trust suggested here. In the summer of 2015, Wael, which is not his real name, a young Syrian man had made it safely across the Aegean Sea, and he was hoping to make it to Denmark where his brother lived. Some of the people who'd crossed the sea with him had relatives who'd previously made the journey. They had established contact with a smuggler who offered to take the whole group to Northern Europe in the back of a truck. The relatives who had previously made the journey said that this man would not cheat, cheat them. Many irregularized migrants had indeed experienced to be cheated in similar arrangements. And we all remember chillingly how irregularized migrants suffocated in the back of a truck in Europe in 2015. Trust was not an easy currency to come by for Wael. So how was Wael able to establish trust at all? We conceptualize the trust well established in the people he traveled with as positional trust. That is, through acknowledging that they, as irregularized migrants, were in the same position as himself, literally in the same boat. He was able to establish a level of trust in them. Further, their trust in their relatives spilled over to Wetton, which we designate a relay trust in them. This in turn, enabled relay trust in the smuggler. The relay trust in the relatives were further strengthened by positional trust in them, as they had also shared Wael's position as irregularized migrants. In this way, Wael was able to rather quickly establish a level of trust that enabled him to make difficult choices. So, though he was petrified to do so, Wael decided to pay the money to the smuggler and get in the truck. While the organization of irregularized traveling in the European border regime does not invite for much, much trust as an institution, there were certain measures which could at times be imposed to guard against interpersonal mistrust, allowing well a level of institutional trust. For instance, Well and his fellow travelers agreed with the smuggler that they paid the money installations along the route as they crossed various borders reducing the risk of them getting left behind after having paid the full amount. Well, it did eventually make it to Denmark, though it was a scary and difficult journey. His fear, which he carefully described to us, is important to consider as it points to the limitations of trust established on these journeys. The trust where it was able to establish enabled him to act, yet it did not, it did not enable him a security that allowed him to relax. Rather, the trust Wael was able to build along the way was a fleeting and reserved trust that needed to be continuously established in acting different intersecting modes of trust. Trust was differently configured when Jens, a while before the summer of 2015, was going home to Denmark from Germany. He offered a ride through a German rideshare app, Mitfagelikenheit, 
and a young man named Mahmoud broke the ride. Mahmoud was from Syria and had asylum in Germany, so he said. He was currently on his way to Sweden to propose to his girlfriend. As they reached the ferry and shared a cigarette, Mahmoud confided to Jens that he did not actually have asylum in Germany, but was traveling as an irregularized migrant. For irregularized migrants, often traveling with large sums of money and having a little opportunity to seek help from police if robbed or assaulted, getting in a car with someone completely unknown poses a risk. However, in, the ca in this case, the trust needed for two strangers to get in the car together was initially established through the app, which allowed for an exchange of information and money, while also setting a frame for the relation between Jens and Mahmoud, in a sense, taking the regularity out of the initial establishment of trust. In this way, Mahmoud was unable to get in the car uh, with a relative trust that he would not be robbed or taken to the police against his will. As such, it was institutional trust that enabled Mahmoud to cross the border in a regular car. It's relevant to point out as well, as this case illustrates, that digital platforms are at times reconfigured for the purposes of irregularized migration. Through establishing four different modes of trust as enacted by irregularized migrants and solidarity workers, we conceptualize trust as hybrid alliance building that is not merely an interpersonal relation, but can include digital platforms, apps, institutions, networks of people, and more. Doing so, we've shown that irregularized migrants and solidarity workers' trust practices have implications for decisions and actions during irregularized journeys. I'm looking very much forward to discussing this further with you. Thank you so much for listening.